Greetings and good time of day to you. Here's another ZX Spectrum I'm in the process of repairing. Its owner reports it produces a display of multicoloured blocks and bars. Before I even turned it on, I replaced all the electrolytic capacitors and performed the usual set of passive measurements to check for some of the most common faults. These didn't indicate any problems. I switched the computer on and it produced a display of multicoloured vertical stripes. This is very often a sign of a lower RAM fault. The fact that the border was white and that the pattern changed slightly in response to me forcing the CPU to reset makes me think the CPU and ROM are probably working and communicating properly. I also tested the ULA in another spectrum and it seemed not to have anything wrong with it. All the power supply voltages were present at the 4116 ICs and so the voltage converter circuit was functioning. Then, after it had been on for two or three minutes, the current draw suddenly increased and tripped the limit I'd set on the power supply. I found that if I left the spectrum off for a while, it would then work again, but the same thing happened after a few minutes. Given the display, and knowing that a failing 4116 RAM IC sometimes demands excessive current or shorts one of its power supply connections, I removed all of the lower RAM and fitted the RAM replacement module you can see here. I was hopeful that would be the end of the faults, but sadly not. Here's the display this spectrum now produces. It's not the same as it originally was, but it's still very similar to the symptoms of a lower RAM fault. I'll force the computer to reset. And again. The display changes and that reinforces the idea that the CPU and ROM are probably working. The good news is that the current draw remains stable, even if I leave the Spectrum on for quite a while, so I think it's a safe bet that at least one of the RAM ICs I removed was faulty. I've been using this oscilloscope to examine various signals at the lower RAM module, and they all appeared normal, apart from this one, which is data line D2. The marker labelled 1 on the left shows the 0 volt level, and the vertical scale is set to 2 volts per division. We can see there are regular pulses to a level of 2 volts. This is not a valid logic level, and it shouldn't happen. A logic high represented by 2.5 to 3 volts is normal, and we can also see it occurring here. This happens because of the spectrum's divided data bus. I then notice that the signal and logic levels on the CPU side of data line D2 are exactly the same. I'll demonstrate by connecting the second channel to this at pin 2 of IC17. I'll freeze the display. This makes it clear the invalid logic level is not due to there being different voltages on the two halves of the data line. I've made some resistance measurements between D2 and the power supply rails, and between its halves and between it and some of the other data lines. The results were approximately what I'd expect them to be from looking at the circuit diagram, and almost identical to the results of the same measurements taken using other data lines. These tests can turn up problems such as a solder splash or other debris bridging circuit board tracks, or a failed device connected to the data line that is shorting it to a power supply rail. If I assume the lower RAM replacement module is not faulty, and I doubt it is, then the invalid logic level at the lower RAM cannot be occurring when either the ULA or CPU is reading from lower RAM. This is because the RAM can drive its data connection high or low as it wishes, regardless of the voltage on the other half of the data line because of the resistors dividing the spectrum's data bus. This means the invalid logic level must appear when the lower RAM is inactive or when the CPU is attempting to write to it. This suggests something connected to the CPU half of the data line is attempting to place a value on it when it shouldn't. If I wanted, I could spend a long time with the oscilloscope and a logic analyzer and work out what is doing this. However, the options are limited, and experience says it will almost certainly be the upper RAM IC that is connected to this data line. Accordingly, I have removed IC17. Let's see whether that has any effect. I'm not too surprised to see that, and hopefully it is initialized as a fully working 16K spectrum.
Here's the waveform on data line D2 at the lower RAM now. This is how it should be. I've loaded and run a memory test program. It uses a machine language routine to fill a block of memory with a random sequence of values and then reads them back to see whether they were stored correctly. The results here list a number of addresses along with the value each should have contained and the value found there. In all cases there is a difference of 4 between the values. This is expected because missing IC17 is responsible for bit position 2 of every upper RAM location. This also tells us that the remaining upper RAM ICs are probably working properly. I've replaced IC17. You might also have noticed that the miniature loudspeaker in the bottom right corner of the board had been missing. I've replaced it with a sounder salvaged from a pair of headphones, along with a 10 ohm series resistor to keep the overall impedance about the same as the original. I expect this now to be a fully working 48K ZX Spectrum. Let's leave it to entertain itself for a while.